Bula and welcome to The Lens at 177. On this show we're having a discussion about a serious issue facing the country and uh, that is the recent road death fatalities and uh, also the issues um, facing public transport vehicles and uh, just bad behavior by uh, some motorists. And I'm uh, so glad to welcome to our studio the CEO of the uh, Land Transport Authority, Mr. Irimaya Rokosawa. Now we're going to Now we're going Sir, you know, uh, it's no secret the road death toll um, 72 compared to 38 for the same period last year. Um, there's been so many videos on social media about uh, just poor driver behavior, public service vehicles, buses, taxis, uh, you know, trucks involved in uh, accidents that have caused deaths. So I just thought to invite you. Um, you know, you've recently called for everyone to join hands and act collectively. Mm -hmm. yeah? to address this issue. But we also know it's common knowledge for us as uh, Fijian people mm. that uh, we don't always respond well to call for action. We, but we may be, would you agree that we may be increasing fines mm. and reintroducing the demerit points would be a better approach? Yeah. Yeah, when I will, uh, Felix, uh, totally agree with the sentiment you have raised in terms of uh, increasing all the fines and the uh, demerit points. Yes. And uh, just for the information of the public, uh, we had undertaken a public consultation uh, in October. Right. And uh, demerit points was one of the topics that we discussed. Eh? Right. And there were four deterrent measures and also one uh, rewarding uh, initiative. Eh? Right. And uh, it was on demerit points the need for Fiji to introduce two levels of provisional license yes. in Fiji, because it's quite alarming to see the number of uh, provincial driver license holders uh, involved in fatality right. or in uh, major accidents. And also the need to to address the escalation from class two to the PSV mode in terms of three, four, and five. Right. And also like uh, the fourth one was on the mandatory defensive driving. Yes. As matters currently stand, uh, the mandatory defensive driving for class two is only during the provisional yes. as the prerequisite to go to to full, full class. class. Yes. For PSV, it's on a six-year annual basis. Eh? Right. Uh, after every six years, you do your defensive research your defensive driving. Right. So we have also seen the, the shift in terms of uh, major external fatalities now uh, around the group to class holders. Right. So we need to come up with something new and uh, we don't want to be seen as uh, doing business as usual. Right. Because uh, the business as usual is where we end up now. Yes. With uh, 72 fatalities compared to 38 in the same period last year. That's an 89% uh, increase. Right. In terms of the hefty fines, totally agree. Yes. Uh, speeding is the major offense. And right now, uh, for speeding uh, less than uh, 15 kilometers per hour, right. it's just $25 between 15 to 30, yes. $40. Right. Over 30, it's $60. Right. It's more like an occupational hazard yes. rather than a deterrent uh, measure. That's true. Yeah, we're right. working very closely with the uh, Ministry of Finance and we have given our submissions right. for Ministry of Finance to relook into those uh, penalties. Eh? Yes. Yeah. Uh, mostly on the spirit to create a more deterrent measures. Right. Demerit points, totally agree. Yes. And uh, it, it will require revision in the law. Right, uh, right now the, the issuance of demerit points is sitting with the magistrate court. Okay. But we want to replicate whatever has been done with our regional brothers in New Zealand and Australia, right. where the demerit points sits with the Land Transport Authority. Yes. And right now our we have a reactive measure on SOCOS. Right where we analyze the traffic feasible notice issued, right. uh, concentrating on the bad driving behaviors, yes. on uh, speeding, uh, dangerous driving, right. careless driving, inconsiderate driving, mm -hmm. and uh, improper use of uh, mobile devices, eh? right. on the behavioral aspects of uh, driving. But then again, uh, uh, when offenders turn up, yes. uh, we do also sympathize with them. Some of them, they try and 
uh, justify that uh, they were not the actual driver right. on that particular day. Right. And uh, we are trying to emphasize to and also plea with the general, with the Fijians out there who are holders of a driver license yes. and also vehicle owners. Mm -hmm. There are provisions in the law for you to transfer the traffic infringement notice from you as the vehicle owner right. to the driver on right. that particular, especially on uh, uh, red light speed cameras. Okay. Yeah, we issue about 16,000 tins on a monthly basis. Right. 12,000 of those is just on red light speed cameras. Okay. Yeah. That's about like three quarter of a, yes. of a monthly things just on speeding, right. and we can uh, relate that to the major cost of fatality, also on speeding, yes. which is about forty six percent of the of the seventy two numbers right. uh, that uh, comprise about thirty three fatalities, eh? mm -hmm. all on speeding. So if uh, vehicle owners or permit holders they have that culture of, of always paying up the things and not transferring, yes. then we are not addressing the actual culprit. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So yeah. we ask uh, vehicle owners of there and permit holders, yeah. exercise the ambit of the law, transfer your things to the driver on that particular offence so that we address the bad driving behaviours and also we're asking officials to report incidents eh? yes. and uh, where there's uh, uh, evidence of careless driving or inconsiderate driving so that we can address this issue through traffic infringement notice and also so costs which can eventually end up to suspension yes. and cancellation of our driver license. Yeah, and unfortunately our people don't complain and uh, you know it's not only with the road issue it's any anything. They exactly. Don't. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think we need to maybe uh, you know your uh, website the live Vinak. chat is a good yeah. avenue I, I personally have uh, mm. found it effective Vinak. Uh, maybe we need to emphasize that a bit more exactly. so people know yes. that uh, when you do complain the yeah. matter is addressed the, the very next day it's, uh, it's urgently addressed yeah. um, yeah. so just on the pedestrians mm. the latest stats that we have is that 31 pedestrians have died so far compared to 22 for the same period last year um, is that consistent with the stats that you have? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, those are the p stats from uh, Fiji Police, and yes. also on top of that, uh, uh, in terms of the 32 eh, a, uh, on, uh, that is uh, taking place this year, uh, 12 of those were pedestrians at fault. Right. Yes. Yeah, so we can see that uh, uh, close to 20. Right. Yeah, they were the innocent victims. Yes. Yeah, probably they were walking on the road and they got bumped by careless uh, drivers or inconsiderate right. drivers or drivers who were speeding. Eh? Right. And uh, the numbers uh, for in terms of pedestrian fall is quite also quite alarming. Yes. It is risen from 7 last year to to 12 this year. And then uh, that's about 17% yes. of, uh, of the total fatalities uh, till date. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, we work with our road safety enforcement uh, team right. in terms of uh, community-based stations and school-based stations eh? mm -hmm. to, to address uh, the need to adhere to, to road rules, uh, safety rules, right. yeah, and uh, uh, simple uh, adhering to signage eh? or yes. road markings. Uh, look to the left, look to the right, all those simple uh, steps that you can take probably could have saved lives. And uh, we are also working with the uh, Ministry of Education mm -hmm. in terms of uh, reintroducing these curriculums to the elementary right. level of yes. uh, our primary schools. Eh? And um, I know during our primary school days there used to be uh, radio programs. Yes. Uh, I'm not too sure about uh, whether that's still been practiced in our elementary, kindergarten, or primary school uh, uh, students, or there's a need to reintroduce those. Eh? Right. Um, there's a need for a lot of stakeholders need to work together. There needs to be goal congruence towards the whole intention of reducing fatalities. Right. Eh? Uh, you know, we, you know, you talk about radio programs, eh? no. but uh, today's world, this yeah. is the, this has yeah. overtaken the radio, yeah, exactly. and even the, even the newspapers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So maybe a social media campaign, yeah. uh, something yeah. like that. And um, one thing that uh, we have noticed as a as a news team mm. is that a lot of people are walking around with earbuds mm. or earphones yes. 
and uh, that can also be an issue no. when it comes to crossing the road. Yeah. You know, they uh, may be lost in thought or listening exactly. to or yeah. watching something. Mm. So maybe even awareness around that. Uh, do you think yeah. that would be a... There's a lot of distractions. Yes. Yeah, both uh, those who are driving and also passengers in the public service vehicle. Right. And like you rightly mentioned, mm -hmm. there's a need for Fijians to start speaking out. Yes. Yeah, and uh, addressing the the issues then and there. Yes. Yeah, and it seems to be our culture, the culture of silence. Eh? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we seem to take it for granted. Yeah. And uh, also along those ways. And uh, in terms of the standards of the vehicles. Yes. Uh, in terms of LT's uh, function, we also address the standards of public service vehicle. Right. But it's very hard to address it when the public service vehicle permit holders right. they saying, but there's no complaints from the public yet. That's, that's true. Yeah. Yes. I mean, this is our hard-earned money. Right. Yeah, we bought a taxi, it's dirty, it's mm. filthy, yet we're still uh, entertaining it. Eh? Right. Yeah. And how it will be a quite challenge for us to address standards of uh, public service or motor vehicle right. when there's hardly any complaints from the general public who use this on a daily basis. Eh? Right. Yeah, and uh, it's always a tug of war when we address this issue with the public service permit holders. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, viewers, yeah. you need to complain. And mm -hmm. I think this uh, it's a very strong message by the CEO that if you are traveling in a vehicle that uh, the driver is not driving safely or responsibly, then you need to speak up and you need to lodge a complaint with the uh, Land Transport Authority. Um, I'm just going to highlight something that uh, we see every day because um, our reporters are out mm. in the field, our photographers are out in the field every day. Mm. We've noted uh, government vehicles, you know, speeding, uh, not following the road rules, and they uh, appear to be uh, getting away with it. You know, uh, sad mm. to say, if you look at the comments on social media, it's mm. government vehicles. PSV vehicles that seem to be breaking the rules mm. and getting away with it. So, you know, how often are government vehicles booked? Do they or do they even get booked at all? Yeah, with the Felix, uh, every driver uh, has to abide within the ambit of the law. Right. There are only certain discretions in the law uh, with a specific vehicle, say, for police, mm. uh, ambulance, and those with uh, specific uh, ministerial appointments. Right. Yeah, apart from the, uh, that, every driver has to embed within the ambit of the law. Right. And also those who are on diplomatic uh, postings, eh? right. yeah, they are exercising their diplomatic privilege. Eh? Right. And uh, we do issue traffic infringement notice uh, for those uh, issued by police, it's directly to the, to the driver. And for on, uh, red light speed cameras, it goes to the vehicle registration, eh? right. and we work closely with the Ministry of Economy right. in terms of uh, uh, transferring those things from the Ministry of Economy as the vehicle custodian of the vehicle, right. uh, government vehicle fleet, to the particular driver on that particular date, eh? right. and uh, for also for PSV. And uh, like I said, uh, with the absence of a demerit uh, system, yes. we do call them in for for show cause. Right. And for show cost uh, in the last uh, financial year from uh, 1st of August to 31st July, we have taken a total of uh, uh, 2,550 right. show cost. 2,450 of those were either counsel or given warning. Right. But uh, 47 were given a uh, final uh, warning. Uh, 27 had their license uh, suspended and uh, about 20 they had their license uh, cancelled. Right. Yeah, from the 2,550, 583 were PSV drivers. Right. Yeah. 510 were counseled and uh, given final warning. Yes. And uh, about uh, 20 had their license uh, cancelled or, or suspended. Eh? Mm -hmm. So there's still room for us to to improve further in yes. terms of addressing this. These are the ones, like I said, those are the ones that are caught by our red light speed cameras right. or caught by police. Eh? Yes. And one of the biggest challenges too that we face in terms of our equipments. Right. Yeah. With uh, speeding as the major offense. Yes. There's about 46 of the current fatalities. But the police has only got 17 speed guns right. all around Fiji. Only 17? 17. 17, 17. And LTE has got only 14 static cameras. Right. We, we got 31 poles, but those 31 poles those doesn't have all cameras. Right. There's only 14 cameras that we rotate 
on a monthly basis. Eh? Well, these are the ones on the roadside. Yeah. Yeah. And it's only here in uh, Vitilevu. Right. And because of the internet coverage, okay. uh, we cannot have uh, steady cameras on the Serua Korokos corridor right. and also from the Raki Raki Korubu corridor. Right. And uh, make it was the one in Honolulu. Yes. Yeah, and uh, we are glad that another service provider has come into, uh, yeah, into our uh, accessibility in terms of internet service providers, Starlink. So Starlink, yeah. yes. Hopefully they bring a different level play field right. in terms of the internet coverage. Eh? Right. Yeah, and that's one of the biggest challenges, which is the infrastructure and also the internet coverage. Because right now we are working with the phone right. only when there is uh, uh, internet connectivity. And uh, yeah. yeah, but then again, we are knocking on higher authorities, especially for our stakeholders, uh, the Fiji police. Eh? Right. And all the understanding is between the static uh, poles, that's where it's going to be addressed by Fiji police. Right. But we are all uh, travelers, our drivers along the, the Queen's Highway. Eh? Yes. We know as soon as you pass Coral Coast, the, the first uh, police post or police uh, uh, speeding uh, checkpoints they receive, that'll be the last one of it, eh? right. uh, until you come to Navo. So this yeah. is just like common knowledge. Yes. It's not because they are not technical in the way they are located. No, it's because of the equipment. Right. Yeah. Because right. they, they have only 17 speed guns to address the speeding uh, offenses for the whole of Fiji. Okay. So it's quite a big challenge eh? yes. for both the uh, Land Transport Authority and, and also for for the Fiji police. Yeah. Well, uh, that's some interesting news that we just learned. Um, and we'll hear more from the CEO when we return from a short break. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories. Bula and welcome back to the show. We're having a discussion with the CEO for the Land Transport Authority, uh, Irmaya Rokosawa. And uh, we were just talking about, uh, while we were off camera, we were talking about uh, some of the challenges with the equipment that uh, um, LTA is facing and also the police. So, uh, sir, can you just explain to us about, uh, you know, you were talking about how the cameras and all that uh, cost quite a bit of funds and then you mentioned Starlink mm -hmm. as well. Uh, people have noted um, on social media that there seems to be a lack of LTA presence. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not getting stopped Mm. or checked, uh, lack of police presence too. Uh, is, does LTA have a manpower issue? Yeah, we Felix. Uh, we do have a issue around manpower. Uh, we are thankful for our new board and uh, for the new government for giving us an extra budget this year. Right. Uh, giving us a provision for 11 more uh, enforcement officers. Okay. So as matters currently stand, we have about 95. Uh, enforcement officers trying to address about uh, 147 registered vehicles around Fiji. Right. So that's like one enforcement officer for every 1,500 vehicle. Right. It's quite a big challenge. Mm -hmm. In terms of our uh, overloading uh, enforcement, there's about 26. Yeah. Of the 95, 26 are on overloading, 23 are on e-ticketing, yes. and uh, the remaining number is on a general uh, enforcement. Eh? Right. For overloading, we, there's about uh, 9,836 registered uh, truck and trailers. Right. So that's like one overloading officer for every 378 uh, truck and Trucks. trailers. And uh, likewise, our e-ticketing uh, officers, there's about 23 of them, trying to tackle about 1,188 uh, buses yes. or close to about 3,600 trips. Right. So that's like one enforcement officer for every 52 buses, right. or around uh, 155 uh, trips. Mm -hmm. So that is the, the challenges that we are facing. Eh? Right. And for us to execute your duty well, uh, visibility is very important. Yes. And that is also the culture for us as Pacific Islanders. Eh? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we seem to only react or act for yeah. that to see when we see, see that uh, there are yes. enforcement officers here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
well, uh, we will continue with our road safety awareness and our road safety programs, uh, visiting uh, communities, yeah. visiting schools, and uh, undertaking uh, different initiatives uh, with the road, uh, roadside enforcement. Uh, but then again, uh, like I said, visibility is very important. Eh? Yes. And uh, we need to be, and that is also the the wishes of every Fijians out there. Right. You need to be in every corner of the road. Yes. Uh, and uh, another thing too that we are also working towards is while we are need to be visible and also in terms of uh, automating uh, some of our systems. Right. Yes. Yeah. And uh, probably putting barcodes in a uh, in number plates or in uh, wheel tax right. and just having uh, cameras there. Uh, rather than having uh, manpower because right. right now when we have uh, our officers on the ground we are we are working on the colors of the wheel tax eh? yes so that's where we it's quite a challenge when uh, those vehicles that are probably newly procured yeah. we also flag them down in right. terms of our uh, interceptions eh? right. yeah and uh, uh, like i stated uh, lta is uh, probably the only commercial statutory authority that still looks after regulation, uh, enforcement, yes. and uh, customer service. Right. Uh, we have not yet fully completed our corporatization journey. Right. Uh, other commercial statutory authorities have had these three arms broken up into three independent bodies. Eh? Yes. For LTA, it's all together in one. Right. So for us to continue as such, we will need uh, other assistance in terms of automation or digitization of, of the processes. Eh? Mm. Uh, instead of probably manpower, probably we'd have uh, cameras. But then again, we need to address the culture as from a perspective as a Fijian. Eh? Yes. Yeah. For us, when we, when we, when we see the enforcement officers, then only then we act. Eh? Right. Yeah. Well, we are having technology on the side, but then again, we need to address it in a Fijian perspective. Eh? Yes. Yes. And uh, we need uh, manpower in order to resolve uh, this issue, not only for LT, but also with our colleagues at uh, Fiji Police. Right. Yeah. Uh, in, if you speak in uh, terms of manpower, ideally, mm. how many enforcement officers would you be looking at? Uh, previously, we had to, there was used to be road marshals. Right, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, there was about like close to about 300 of the road muscles around right. Fiji. Yes. Yeah, but due to budget provisions, those uh, initiatives was uh, solved. Right. Yeah, and uh, like I said, uh, those that were there before me also saw the need to address it in a Fijian perspective was yes. to have the visibility on the ground. Eh? Yes. Yeah, and uh, especially in the black spots and also in uh, areas where uh, LTA, and uh, Fiji police are not present. Eh? Right. This is where the road muscles come in, yes. and also in major towns and cities, right. and uh, also uh, educating uh, pedestrians right. while they are crossing uh, zebra crossings right. and uh, and how to adhere to simple rules in terms of adhering to street lights. Yeah, okay. when they're on the red, you're not supposed to cross. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, it had really brought the fatality down. This was during the 2011 to the 2014 period. Eh? Yes. And uh, there, there was a, in initiative a, a decade of road safety. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And uh, that was when, uh, like I said, uh, for us today, it needs the tone from the top. Eh? Right. When the budgetary allocations was uh, solely allocated towards road safety, and we were able to control it eh? yes. in terms of the fatalities. Right. So there's also been a discussion to bring back the Road Safety Council. Right. Uh, right now, in terms of road safety awareness, budget provisions, it's scattered around a number of stakeholders. Yeah. Uh, the Fiji Police, uh, FRA, LTA, mm -hmm. ACCF, for that matter, right. uh, National Fire Authority, sitting with the St. John Ambulance. Mm -hmm. So we need a probably an independent body right. that, uh, that is solely responsible for road safety awareness programs and any other related uh, activities. Eh? Mm. And these road muscles was part of the road safety council. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So ideally, we should have about 300, ideally. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the kind of mm. number that we... Mm. Um, one thing we've uh, also noted, uh, you know, a lot of vehicles on the road. Uh, I travel from Suva to Navua every day and uh, 
a lot of vehicles have either one headlight mm -hmm. or what we call one eye, mm -hmm. and uh, vehicles without any uh, operating uh, stop lights. Mm -hmm. you no, know, just those little things that exactly. can also you know. lead to uh, potential accidents. Mm -hmm. eh? Um, and we haven't really seen those vehicles being booked because mm. we see the same vehicle mm. traveling up and down and uh, yeah. without yeah. rectifying the yeah. so you know why why is this happening yeah uh, totally agree with you Felix uh, from uh, in the, in the just in this calendar year we were issued about uh, 3061 things right. uh, for non conformity of uh, of uh, headlamps, eh? right. yeah, those who are probably giving uh, extra glare and yes. those that are probably not functioning. Uh, but then again, like I said, the, in some certain instances, the, the, the fines and penalties is, uh, is not a deterrent measure. Eh? Yes. Yeah. And uh, we also have our uh, clauses with the act to impound uh, vehicles. Those are the very drastic measures that we, we can take it. Right. Uh, but uh, we also humbly request the assistance of every Fijians out there. Right. Uh, those are the 3,061 3, of those ones that's been intercepted by either police or LT. But there are others that are mm -hmm. running around there and we need uh, Fijians to speak out and uh, and uh, report this to LT so that we can come down hard on them. Right. And uh, also in terms of uh, the uh, headlights, the bulbs, eh? Yes. Yeah. There are a lot of uh, new versions coming into the market. Right. We are working closely with uh, uh, Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority. Right. And how best do we control this uh, from the port of entry? Yes. Eh? And have to have this uh, regulated. For example, tints. We have done bookings. They have taken it off. Mm. But in the next weeks, you see them putting, putting it back. back. Yeah. 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 yeah, And uh, we are working closely with the other stakeholders. Eh? Right. How best we can have a probably a panel of uh, suppliers. But then again, if that has to happen, we need to control other players with the market. Because right. at times we wanted to regulate the market, but uh, uh, the customers still had a choice yes. whether to go to the uh, the one that is in the list of the panel of uh, accredited suppliers right. or those that are not. Eh? Right. So it uh, will need the whole co collaborative effort right. of all key stakeholders there for us to, to address this. Eh? Right. Yeah. Yes, and, and uh, you know while we're talking about uh, non-conformance, um, some of the buses, uh, yeah. like uh, traveling nightclubs, mm. you know, uh, I had to use the bus uh, just recently because mm. my vehicle was being uh, fixed, mm. and uh, I had to get up and tell the driver yeah. to turn the yeah. volume down. Yeah. But uh, you know, you see it in uh, Suva City, mm. you see it all around the, in fact, all around the country where. Mm. Buses have boom boxes. Mm. You yeah. know, uh, you know. The question people would ask is, why are they allowed to install that in the yeah. first place? Yeah. And then, when they're operating it, mm. is anyone um, keeping a check or monitoring mm. these buses? Yeah. So you know what what's being done yeah. in that area. Yeah, been available, Felix. Uh, in the last ten months, we've issued about uh, 312 right. uh, traffic infringement notices. And for the information of the public, uh, it's against the law. Right. Yeah, uh, under Regulation 46 of our uh, traffic regulations, eh? yes. yeah, to to entertain undue noise. Right. Yeah. So when we also try to address this with the bus operators, together yes. with the Fiji Bus Owners Association, right. and also with those that are non-members, eh? yes. and uh, in terms of their uh, road route license permits, yes. there are conditions in the permits that they need to exercise and adhere to. And uh, something we're trying to address very quickly with the uh, permit holders, at times they know the conditions of the permit, but it's for it's their duty right. to address this with their drivers. Eh? Right. And whoever is their uh, probably gentlemen's operations right. in their respective garages to ensure that these are uh, mandatory in, in yes. the regulations. And uh, we are coming down hard on that. And uh, that is something that, uh, that is not supposed to be entertained by bus drivers. Eh? Right. And uh, every Fijians out there, they need the comfort of the, of the PSB traveling uh, yes. uh, modes. Eh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, just my final question. Mm. Uh, 72 deaths yeah. compared to 38. 
you know, people would say this is now a crisis. You know, you, you, we can't uh, uh, take a soft approach anymore. Naka. And as you rightly said, mm. maybe the fines mm. uh, uh, just not sufficient enough mm. uh, deterrent. Mm. Um, you know, I I don't know wh what's next. How do we uh, get the fines to a level mm. that will deter drivers from speeding, yeah. drink driving, mm. uh, and uh, driving responsibly? What uh, What's the next step? Yeah, now valuable, Felix. I believe uh, it's for both uh, key stakeholders, those that are uh, vehicle owners and drivers, and also for the Land Transport Authority. Yeah. And uh, I'm giving the heads up to every vehicle owners out there and every driver license holders. Yeah. We, are, we will be coming down hard in terms of so courses, yeah. and uh, we are accountable for fatalities. And yeah. uh, even though it's quite a challenging KPIs to, for us to achieve, Mm -hmm. as we cannot be in every corner of the road in yes. every vehicle but then again for those that have the tendency to keep on uh, breaking the driving regulations have the tendency not to adhere to good driving behaviors will be coming down hard on them mm -hmm. and we just had our so course uh, last friday and this will be a regular uh, uh, occurrence eh? mm -hmm. uh, until we demerit point comes into the regulations but then again, we can run this uh, concurrently. Yes. And uh, for us to address fatalities, I mean, we are in the in the festive seasons. We need uh, every driver license holder out there and every vehicle owner. Mm -hmm. You need to be courteous. You need to be considerate, and you also need to empathize with every road users out there. Mm -hmm. We can control. Uh, uh, the fatality numbers yes. because we have seen that 85 percent of the fatalities is just on uh, driving behavior yes. so it's a uh, human related eh? yes. uh, this we're not talking about the mechanical aspect right. the mechanical aspect is a very small component right. yeah this is a uh, behavior related right. so once we address the behavior either uh, we can use the stick or, or the carrot right. right now we are going with the stick because the numbers are quite alarming. Uh, yes. We are working very hard with our uh, colleagues in the Fiji Police Force. Right. But then again, like I said, uh, with the absence of the demerit points, so cause is, is the way to go. And uh, we plead with uh, every vehicle owner out there. Right. In number of so causes, they are pleading that they are not the drivers on the ground. Please exercise the ambits of the regulations, the provisions of the regulations, transfer those things to the driver so that we do address with the, with the main culprit. Eh? Yes. If you have the tendency to keep on paying the fines right. because just, you just want to get your vehicle registered uh, during its annual registration uh, period, yeah. but then again we are not addressing the issue. Yes. Yeah, and uh, for us, uh, the Land Transport Authority, your office of the Land Transport Authority, together with the Fiji Police Force, we need the assistance of every Fiji out there, uh, every home, every communities, every village out there, uh, not only in the in the main trunks, right. but also in the rural areas. Yes. Uh, we are coming towards the festive season, time for celebration, time for exchange of gifts and pleasantries. So let's enjoy the spirit of uh, the Christmas and let's, let's address these uh, fatalities that is uh, becoming a, a probably a, a, a Concern and uh, uh, tragedy at yes. the moment. Eh? Yes. Yeah, it's really quite alarming. Thank you. No value. No yeah. value. Yeah. You heard it from the mm. CEO himself for the Land Transport Authority, and uh, we at the Fiji Times also plead with uh, motorists and pedestrians and passengers. Passengers speak up. Pedestrians be more aware when you're out there, and motorists please drive responsibly. And uh, from us here at the Fiji Times, uh, to watch this show and others like it, please um, visit our YouTube channel, our Facebook and Twitter, and also our website www.fijitimes.com.